right, multiplying fractions. So I prefer this to adding and subtracting fractions because um, you don't have to worry about the common denominator um, like you do when you're adding and subtracting. So whenever you're multiplying fractions, all you've got to do is multiply along the top and multiply along the bottom. Um, I always tell my classes like chain tracks and they just go like straight across like that. So you multiply along the top and multiply along the bottom. So one times three is three and two times five is 10. What you've also got to remember is to just always double check and make sure um, that the fraction can be can be simplified. So three and 10, there's no number that can divide them both by, so, so that's my answer. With the second one, five over seven times four over six. Um, again, like chain tracks, multiple along, along the top, multiple along the bottom. So you do five times four, which is 20, and seven times six, which is 42. Um, this time we can simplify. There's a number I can divide them both by. So 20 and 42, I can divide them both by two, which is going to give me 10 over 21. And again, there's a number there that's, that's going to work for that. So, so that's my answer there. So 6 over 11 times 7 over 9. So what you can do with multiplying fractions um, is you can look at the diagonal numbers and see if there's any number you can divide them both by. So if you look at 11 and 7, so the bottom left and top, and top right, there's no number that can divide them both. But if I look, I look at the other diagonal, so 6 and 9, there is a number I can divide 6 and 9 by. So if I divide them both by, by 3, okay, because they're both divisible by 3, if I divide 6 by 3, it gets me 2. And if I divide 9 by 3, it gets me 3. So what I can then do instead is use my new number and just multiply that way. So 2 times 7 is 14, and 11 times 3 is 33. And there's no number that's going to simplify that any further. If I didn't do that and I just kept it as it was, which you're more entitled, like more than entitled to do, um, multiple along the top, along the bottom. So 6 times 7 would have given me 42. And 11 times 9 is 99. Now, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't have immediately seen as easily that 42 was divisible by 3, but it is, and you would divide them both by 3 and get 14 over, th over 33. Okay, so it's, just, it's a wee bit easier sometimes to, to look at the diagonals and try and simplify that way. With the one after this, um, we're definitely going to have to do that. Like doing 25 times 36, you know, could take much longer than it needs to. So let's look at the diagonals. So 25 and 50. I can divide them both by, there's a few numbers, but 25 would be the biggest number that I could divide them both by. So 25 divided by 25 gives me 1, and 50 divided by 25 gives me 2. The other diagonal, 36 and 48, again, there's a few numbers I can divide them both by. And the biggest one I can think of is, is probably 12. So I could divide 36 by 12, gives me 3, and I could divide 48 by 12, it gives me 4. And now I'm going to multiply with my new numbers. So 1 times 3 is 3, 4 times 2 is 8, and that number's not going to simplify anymore. If we've been given ones that have a mixed number, we're going to have to change that into a top-heavy fraction first. So I've got 1.5 times 2 and 3 quarters, so I'm going to change both those numbers into top-heavy fractions first. So one remember, you take the number in the front, times it by the number in the bottom, and add the number in the top. So 1 times 2 is 2, plus 1 is 3, and then the number in the bottom stays the same. Okay, so this next one, take 2 times by 4, add on 3. So 2 times 4 is 8, plus 3 is 11. So it's 11 over 4. Now I can just multiply along the top and along the bottom. So I get 3 times 11, which is 33, and 2 times 4, which is 8. Okay, um, you can leave your number as a, as a, a top heavy fraction, that's fine. If you are asked to change it back into a mixed number, um, you just do 8 divided by 33. So 8 into 3 doesn't go. 8 into 33 goes 4 times with a remainder 1. So the answer is 4 with your 1 remainder over 8. Next one is 5 over 7 times 2. If you're given a number on its own, just remember that you, you basically just take that number and put it over 1. So in this case, we've got 5 over 7 times 2 over 1. But if that was, if that was 3, it would be 3 over 1. If it was 5, it would be 5 over 1. If it was 100, it would be 100 over 1. And then just multiply on the top, multiply on the bottom. So 5 times 2 is 10. 7 times 1 is 7. So it's just um, 10 over 7. Again, if you're asked to change that into a mixed number, it's got 1 
with 3 over 7 left over. Okay.